Welcome to another edition of Islanders Insider, coming to you from the press box here today at the Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadium. I'm Stephen King. We're going to be speaking with Shanna Caldwell, head coach of Islanders Soccer, as well as head coach of Islander Volleyball, Tony Greystone. We also have a special feature focusing on Islander Baseball, what's been going on in the fall, and their momentous Halloween game coming up. Right now, we are going to talk some volleyball with the head coach. Tony Greystone, how are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Very good. Very good. First off, congratulations. Successful road swing, winning two of two, uh, a 3-0 sweep of Northwestern State, and of course a monstrous 3-2 five-set victory over Stephen F. Austin in Nacogdoches. Um, was this weekend circled on your calendar for a long time? Yeah, this was a big one. And, and we knew going in, you know, they were picked first in the conference. They're the returning regular season champ. You know, we knew that they were the team to, to beat going into this. So, um, yeah, that was a big one. Do you think you were circled on their calendar for a long uh, time? I would think so. I would think so. Uh, it, you know, and as the thing is played out, you know, we've kind of risen to the top. So, yeah, it was big all the way around, and they were more than ready for us. Well, it was a big weekend. As SFA was a battle of Southland Conference unbeatens, let me ask you, what was more difficult to contend with? the talent from Stephen F. Austin, or maybe that hostile atmosphere that you get when you go to Nacogdoches, uh, an ESPN3 game. They had a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Well, we were ready for that, and, and we talked it up quite a bit. So the crowd was everything we thought it was going to be. And, and just walking around campus throughout the day, you could tell that there was a lot of hype around it, and, um, and they had promoted it really well. So um, once the doors open and every, we were going through warm-ups, you can see just wave after wave of kid coming in. And it, we knew it was going to be that way. but. You know, that's just they just react to what's going on on the court. It's, it's SFA was the feature that was the focus of our attention, and, and they um, were everything that we thought they were going to be as well. So you train them to play the game, but you have to psychologically prepare yeah. them to just tune everything and out. Yeah, there's a couple ways to do it. You know, sometimes you try to block it out. Sometimes you try to absorb it and let it in and let it kind of pump you up. And, you know, we've got a team that kind of plays off that side of it for sure. So the bigger the crowd, I felt like the, the better we were going to play. Considering where we're at today and this season and, and your career here, was that five-set win over the Lumberjacks the biggest win of, of your honor career? Probably. You know, you'd have to put it in there with the win at UCA. I think those, as far as conference matches go, um, just to beat those two teams on the road, considering the history of those programs. And, you know, traditionally what you have to do to get to the top of the conference, you got to go through them. So, yeah. You know, who would have ever thought that Islander Volleyball would possibly be known because of their play in the middle? And it's historically that's not been our strength. Now, mm -hmm. your sophomore middle blockers, Brittany Gilpin and Madeline Dowd, are having a tremendous year. Now, not to take anything away from them, but if it wasn't for their fellow sophomore setter, Kristen Nicholson, and the confidence she had in them, it might be a bit, bit of a different story, would you yeah, say? Yeah, no question. Those, those three have a great chemistry together, you know, but every day it's, it's the transition, it's the timing, it's the spacing. and. Um, and then the, the confidence and the rapport that they have with each other. And, and you can just see Kristen never questions whether or not she can give either one of them the ball. And, uh, and Maddie, for sure, against SFA, she was the difference maker. That was, you know, kind of out of left no field. I mean, she's been a very efficient middle all year, but we hadn't relied on her to give us three kills a game ever. And, and for her to step up like that, that was a big, big thing. And, you know, SFA's middles are the, the foundation of their team as well. And so for us to go into that match and outscore them in the middle and, and play cleaner than them, that, that was big. Nicholson's contribution in that relationship, I mean, it, it, they don't hit the numbers they hit. You know, Madeline's hitting 600 against SFA. Mm -hmm. You know, they're one and two in the conference and in, in, South, in Southland play as far as hit percentage is concerned. A lot of it has to do because the ball is in the right place. Yeah, for sure. And that's Kristen's strength is the, the location of it. And, um, and our offense is, I won't say it's complicated, but it's precise and, and the ball has to be in the right place because, you know, we're not a big team. And so for us to hit those shots, we've got to have some seams and some space. So um, that's where Kristen comes in and gives them the ball the right way. No doubt. Uh, are, are teams serving more away from Kate Klopeka now, your libero? I mean, sometimes having national rankings and being recognized can work for you, but can also work against you because you may not see as many balls as you had in the past. Yeah, I think they try. But they try. They try. Okay. Uh, Kate's pretty good about cutting people off, and if there's a ball she's going to get to, she's going to get that touch, and um, you know she's going to take the ball first and apologize for it later. I'm about to say that's just an yeah, understanding on just, the floor. It's yeah, her job. That's what she does. Don't even second guess it. Yeah, and and so uh, you know, but again, you know, if you don't serve Kate, who are you going to serve? You know, you can go after Ivy. 
that's not always a great idea. You can go after Haley King or Shayla or Maddie Woods, but you know we're so balanced in that area that um, a lot of times they'll try in the beginning to go away from her, and then at the end they've kind of run out of options. So then they'll come back at Kate, and then we're in good shape. You know, at 18 and four, six and zero in Southland Conference play, you know you are continuing to improve on the best start ever for this program. Uh, at this point, you know you kind of ventured into some uncharted territory uh, for Islander volleyball. How do you keep your team grounded and focused on the present? Well, that's the thing. you got to focus on what's right in front of us. And, and we've been pretty good at getting a win and then shutting it down and moving away from it and giving enough respect to who we're about to play that we can, you know, get ready for it. Um, we've been talking a lot about, uh, with each match, finding a way to be emotionally invested in it because we know in the other locker room that's all they're thinking about is knocking us off you know when you're the first place team that's where the target is so we've got to find a way to match whatever emotional side of it is being put into it and then we'll have a better reason to not come out flat and and play our game you know dig pink is next up for Islander volleyball it takes place on thursday the 15th against the university of incarnate word uh, this event promoting awareness of the fight against breast cancer has grown over the years and has become something very special uh, to this program. Is it just another game to players or, or to the players themselves does it have a bigger meaning? Well, they know a lot of it. You know, they understand the importance of the match and what it stands for, um, which is a big, big deal, of course. But they also know that traditionally this is the crowd of the year. And, um, and it's been this way since the day I, I came to Corpus. It's always been promoted well and, and the students really come out and support it. So. Um, and with us playing Incarnate Word this year, they're you know the closest conference school that we've got, so there's somewhat of a you know territorial thing here as well. So I know that the crowd is going to be really good, and it, just like it always is. And you may see me taking the team out of the gym during timeouts just so I can hear myself talk. <laughs> That's a good problem to yeah, have. I it suppose. is a good problem. Yeah. Uh, six of the last eight matches are played at home in the Dugan Wellness Center. And you know, tell me how crucial that will be for your team's run to accomplish the goal of an undefeated conference Yeah, season. it's going to be big, you know, because we're, we're trying to maintain that momentum. Um, and it's tough to do it on the road. So, you know, we've had a, a good portion of our road matches knocked out and taking care of some good things. And, um, you know, but the stretch at the end has some good competition and, and it's not going to be easy. So it'll be nice to get most of those at home and see if we can close it out. Tony Greystone joining us once again. Yeah. Congratulations on the weekend and best of luck continuing forward. I appreciate it. Thanks. When we come back to Islanders Insider, we have a special feature focusing on Islander baseball and what's coming up ahead for them. Stay with us. More to come. Islander Insider continues. Hey, hey you, Couch Potato, what are you doing at home? This is where the action is. These seats are great. I can even yell at the coach from here. Hey, coach. Hey, coach. These are great seats. I know, and it's a great game, too. I wish I could sit here. Hey. Who's coaching the team? Islanders basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 825-BALL or visit GoIslanders.com to order yours today. I'm Christy Felice and I am the Director of Brand Engagement for the Houston Astros. Texas A&M University at Corpus Christi has absolutely helped get me to where I am today and it is a small campus with large opportunities. You should definitely choose Texas A&M University at Corpus Christi. 97% of A&M Corpus Christi graduates will be working or in graduate school upon graduation. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Discover your island. Visit us today at tour.tamucc.edu. Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, we have a special feature focusing on Islander baseball. 
Let's check in with Islander Insider Field Correspondent, Reagan Neelam. The Texas A&M Corpus Christi baseball team has returned to Chapman Field for fall practices as a gear for another exciting season this spring. Today we will be joined by head coach Scott Malone as we talk about Islanders baseball, the newcomers, and the Halloween baseball game. Alrighty, Coach, how are you doing today? Uh, great, great to be here. Great. Um, we have started practices for this fall, and how is practice going thus far? Well, it's going great. You know, first of all, as always, South Texas weather is cooperating, as you can see out here today, another day where it's 85 degrees. So it's great. Um, we're starting week three today. Um, guys are doing a good job coming out to the park every day, ready to go. Um, you know, we lost so many kids from last year's club. I think the players realize, you know, there's a lot of open positions. So I think we're getting some great competition. Guys are coming out every day trying to win a job. So it's fun. Cool. And so how are we going to prepare to win this championship this year? We went to the Southland semifinals last year. And how are we going to conquer that this year? You know, um, obviously my coach speak would be to tell you it's a process, you know, but uh -huh. this is year nine for me. And, and, you know, each year continues to get a little bit better. Um, you feel like this program is definitely kind of climbing up that mountain and we're getting close. And, um, you know, usually I would tell you pitching and defense wins games. So um, we'll be as good as those guys coming out of the bullpen as much as as good as our starting pitching is every night. That's how good this club will be. And we're going to be counting on some new guys this year. So it'll be fun. It'll be a fun challenge. There's some you might see a senior one night you might see a junior the next day and you might see a freshman you know on Sunday so um, it's it's a fun time of year it's kind of uh, rejuvenating in the program to see so many you know 13 freshmen have a chance to to get on the field and play for us so it's gonna be a fun spring and speaking of freshmen um, who is who should we look out for with the freshman class Boy, there's a, there's a lot of talented kids. Yeah, I, I can just tell you, you know, right off the bat, early out here, um, Dustin LaCaze looks like a really good right-handed pitcher for us. Um, Nick Anderson's a big, strong, physical, looks like a football player. Mm -hmm. You know, he hit one up on that berm the other day, so he's got a lot of natural abilities, you know, some strength as a hitter. Um, but there's there's a long list of guys, some talented kids that um, – that are going to get a chance. And I think that's where this club's going to be so different than the ones we've had the last two or three years. We've just been very veteran led with lots of lots of seniors and juniors on the field. And I think this might be the first spring where you see some sophomores and freshmen running around playing a big part of it. So it'll be fun. And how will you utilize the underclassmen are um, participating this year? Is it is it hard as a coach to utilize them as much as possible? Sure. No, it definitely is. Um, you know, and that's that fine line between some young, talented guys that we're excited about, but I don't really know what I have yet. They haven't put on a jersey. They haven't had to go to Texas on a Tuesday night or go to Texas A&M or, you know, play Sam Houston for a three-game series. That's, that's when you put them out on the field and you find out who's got a little moxie, who can go out there and just relax and play the game. Um, we've got a ton of talented kids who can go relax with the lights on. That's what we got to find out. So um, again, that's the fun part. It's hard to simulate that in the fall, in the off season, when we're training, when we're playing every day, we're having scrimmages. It's hard to simulate game action, but we do our best to, to put these guys in some win-loss situations where, you know, maybe one day it's, hey, if we lose, you know, we're running 10 sprints at the end of practice. And you, you just try to put a lot on the line, you know, in the fall to get them to play with some urgency to play with the whole team has eyes on them and everybody's watching this pitch or this at bat or can we make this play so you know we've done our best so far to kind of simulate that out here and um, we've got about four weeks to go um, a lot of good work left to go in the fall to be fun to see who can come out here and win some jobs Alrighty, so tell us a little bit about the Halloween game and how will that involve the community? Yeah, sure. This is um, going to be our second try, you know, and we were scared to death last year. We wanted to do it. We knew it'd be a fun event, but we had no idea how big, how small, how it would be received. And, you know, we put a flyer together, blanketed the community, invited everybody out. We had bounce house, um, face paint, you know, encourage everybody to come in their, in their best uh, Halloween costume. And we were hoping for 50, you know, maybe we'll get 50 kids, moms, dads, it'll come out. We had 500, which wow. we were blown away. It was an unbelievable night, highlight of our fall semester. And so obviously now we're going to try it again. Um, we're going to incorporate softball team. We're going to have them out here. So that'll give us a whole nother presence, especially for all the little girls coming mm -hmm. out. So um, again, um, I think it's going to be a really neat night. 
um, all of our players out here playing baseball in full Halloween costume, mm -hmm. that's almost worth it alone. Mm -hmm. You know, forget all the candy and all the games we're playing for the kids, just coming out and seeing all the different costumes. You know, last year, Nolan Holland, our setup guy, stole the show. He was the Red Power Ranger. He has actually has a red motorcycle, and he started the game off coming around the berm, down, you know, down onto the field with his motorcycle, and comes out and throws the first pitch in the first inning. So we got to see what player can top that this year, but it should be a great night. And what will you leak to us what your costume will be this year? Last year, the coaches went all individuals. We all had our own plan and our own costume. This year, we're talking about a theme, um, and I may age some of our some of our listeners, but um, we're we're going to come as I think the village people. So okay. little '70s style, and and I don't know if you remember the group, but they all had a different costume that they wore every night. So um, you might see a, a policeman, an Indian, you know, a little bit of everything, a little construction workers. So I'll let everybody wait to see who's who. All right, it sounds like we have exciting season ahead of us, and thank you again. You got it, Reagan. Thanks for having me. The Southland Conference has great mascots, but which one's the best? You tell us during the Mid-South Bank Southland Conference Mascot Challenge. Visit the Southland Conference Facebook page and vote daily. Post a picture with your mascot and earn extra points. Show us how much you love your mascot and your school could take home the big cash prize during the Mid-South Bank Southland Conference Mascot Challenge. Mid-South Bank, it's time to love your bank. My name is Candy Richardson and I'm the principal at Gibson Elementary School. When I wanted to move up in my career, A&M Corpus Christi was there for me. A great career starts with a great education. My professors took a personal interest in my success. Texas A&M Corpus Christi helped me become the leader that I am today. More than half of A&M Corpus Christi graduates don't have student loan payments after graduation. Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Discover your island. Visit us today at virtualtour.tamucc.edu. Welcome back to Islanders Insider, as it's time to talk some Islanders soccer with head coach Shanna Caldwell. Coach, how are you doing today? Good. Good to see you. Good seeing you. Uh, since the last time we spoke, a couple of serious positive developments for Islanders soccer, in particular two big wins, a win over southeastern Louisiana and the second win over the University of the Incarnate Word. So first off, congratulations. And how did these, well, how did these two wins change the demeanor of the team? Um, I mean, they were definitely big wins. Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing with the team all year is that we've we've fought and we have you know we've never gotten down on ourselves so um, it was a nice uh, it was a nice boost for them to to finally break through um, and come out with the win instead of that, that narrow defeat um, but overall you know I think that the team has uh, stayed with it the whole year they, they've always believed that they could win so um, it was nice to see the, see the victory. Outstanding. Uh, could you explain to me maybe what was the difference? in the team's execution in the past maybe versus some of the other um, I think this, you know, the past couple games, we've just kind of eliminated a lot of our own turnovers. Um, that's been, the, you know, one of the big factors is uh, we've just been a little bit more solid on the ball. Um, you know, where we, you know, maybe do, you know, give the ball, turn the ball over, it, it's not as uh, critical spots on the field. So, um, you know, that's helped. And, you know, we've just been sharp. The the you know, goalkeeper DJ's been playing well, and um, you know we've had some solid in play from uh, out of the midfield and center backs, and uh, really just everybody. You know, different individuals step up each game, uh, which has been really nice. Talking about different individuals stepping up, it's been kind of an unexpected benefit 
of these couple of wins is the discovery of that depth. You know, considering you've been playing without the services of your all-time leading scorer in Yvette Franco, without uh, your force in the midfield in Callum Radona, other people have had to step up. Uh, you know, I think it, it just, we've, we, the, the big key for our team, we've always been versatile. They've always understood just what the system is and what the roles are. And uh, no one's really afraid to try something new. And, uh, you know, Emma Biba's finally got a chance. Uh, she's been, for two years, has been wanting to play in the midfield um, and, and has now got her, her chance and is, um, you know, she's come in watching film and, and understanding what she can do better each game. And, uh, you know, as a result, I think she's had some positive, uh, positive impact out on the field. Well, that's just outstanding. Now, do you change the game plan or how do you coach when playing with the lead. I'm talking about now that you're you're you win a couple of ball games, you're have you have an advantage going into those final minutes. Do you have to change your game plan? What what's what's different in those final moments? You know, I mean, you can emulate as much you can you can try to emulate as much as you want and practice that that feeling, uh, you know, the, the other team's high pressing you and there's there's not much time left in the game and you you've got to keep the win. Um, you know, we, we try to, to tell the kids just to, to stay as calm as possible and to continue to do what we were doing that, that got us the lead, and that's trying to attack, um, still playing our game plan, but being smart if there's nothing on, you know, trying to, trying to play into the corners and, and, you know, work the clock a little bit, but just being as relaxed as possible um, and, and, and not getting frantic, and, you know, we're, we're getting better and better at that as we get more experience, so. Oh, there's no doubt. Now, one of your players that is really, you've looked to, to step up and be there, especially with the loss of a vet, is Haley Sutton. Now, she's a junior. She's picked up a couple goals recently. What instruction did you give her uh, to place more emphasis on her, just plain and simple, looking for her shot? Uh, you know, she, Haley's done a great job of getting down, down the flank and serving the ball in. Um, but, you know, we want her to continue to do that, but also know that, you know, there's, there's definitely times that she is the faster of the, of the player, you know, that she's going up against and to not be afraid to, to take on 1v1 and if they give her space that, that she does have a good shot and she just needs to pull the trigger more and, um, you know, she's starting to do that and she's got some positive results and, you know, that, that always helps with the confidence, especially uh, forwards. Forwards like to score goals, so. Um, it's, been, it's been a nice change to see. Cordero. It's nice to have the green light. Isn't Make that Gonzalez. Yeah. <laughs> just, to, to, to cool. just shoot. Through it's okay. and yeah. in. Yeah. Polson nice steps wow. around the keeper. Wide yeah. open net. Yeah. And the Islanders yeah. have a 1 nothing lead yeah. just four minutes into the second okay. half. Tied for sixth. Okay. There we go. But up next is Central Arkansas and Northwestern State. What is necessary to continue the winning ways on the road? You know, I, I think the biggest thing for us is that we know we have five games left and every game matters and we just take one at a time. That's been our approach all season. We don't look past the next game. Um, you know, we, have, we know we have a long travel ahead of us and it's making sure that we prepare our bodies uh, properly and that we continue to work on what our strengths are um, and sure up some of our, you know, uh, spots that, that could be a little bit more solid. Um, and we're doing that and we're doing those little things and it's just staying positive and, and just seeing, seeing each game all the way through to the end. Absolutely. Well, Coach, I mean, it's been a nice run as of late. Let's keep this momentum going. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Shanna Caldwell joining us here once again at the Press Box in the Dugan Family Soccer and Track Stadium here on the campus of Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. When we come back, we'll bring you up to speed on what's next for Islanders Athletics. Stay with us. More to come. Islanders Insider continues.
Welcome back to Islanders Insider. At this time, let's bring you up to speed on what's next for Islanders Athletics. Islander Volleyball will be taking the court on Saturday the 17th as they host Abilene Christian in the Dugan Wellness Center. Start time, 1 o'clock. They'll head out on the road on Thursday the 22nd to take on Nichols in Tibula, Louisiana at 6.30. Then on Saturday the 24th, they'll travel to Lake Charles to play McNeese at 12.30. Islander Volleyball will be returning to the Dugan Wellness Center on Thursday the 29th as they host Lamar at 6.30 and then on Saturday the 31st as they play Sam Houston State at 1 o'clock. Soccer will return back to the Jack here on the campus of Texas A&M University Corpus Christi as they host Lamar at 7 o'clock on Friday the 23rd. They'll continue their homestand on Sunday the 25th at 1 o'clock as they take on McNeese. And then Islander Soccer will head back on the road on Friday the 30th a 5 o'clock start time as they play Houston Baptist. Honored Women's Tennis will be competing in the ITA Texas Regionals at Texas A&M College Station on Thursday the 22nd through October 26th. And Honored Cross Country will be competing in the Southland Conference Championships at Huntsville, Texas on Friday the 30th. Log on to GoHonors.com for additional schedule information or to watch all home volleyball and soccer matches live or on demand on the Honors Digital Network. Once again, we want to thank Shanna Caldwell, head coach of Islander Soccer, and Tony Greystone, head coach of Islander Volleyball, for joining us here in the press box today. We also want to thank Reagan Elam for her report on Islander Baseball. For everyone here at the Islander Broadcast Crew, I'm Stephen King. You've been watching Islanders Insider. I'm in Midland, Texas in order to be closer to the action and see actually what is going on with our drill bits. I'm Valerie and I'm a field-based designer for Baker Hughes. There's not that many females in the mechanical engineering industry, but it's growing. A&M Corpus Christi prepared me for my career. The professors are able to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Based off the class sizes, you're able to get more hands-on experience. If you're interested in engineering, A&M Corpus Christi should be your first choice. Named a top Texas university for return on investment. Visit us today at tamucc.edu. Probably ought to need to look at the annuity program too. I'm a CPA. I love helping people. I'm Patricia Quintana Pro and I'm a tax partner with BKD San Antonio. Life at Texas A&M Corpus Christi was busy. I was very focused. I was a working student. I went back to at Texas A&M Corpus Christi to obtain my master's because it provided value and because I, I really love the atmosphere at the university. I love the way the teachers were involved in our careers and in our futures. When it comes to business management and accounting, Texas A&M Corpus Christi has what you need.